When you choose to major in economics, I find that people have two big concerns. First, are they going to be able to get a job? And second, is that job gonna be some boring bureaucratic job? But what if you could study economics and help build one of the biggest video games in the world? Yeah, my name is Isaac Knowles. I work at Epic Games. I work almost exclusively on Fortnite and I majored in economics. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power where we believe in the power of markets and economics to shape our world. So if you wanna join this community of people interested in and excited about economics, go ahead and subscribe. I've talked about economics in Zelda, in Pokemon, and now it's time to get to Fortnite. But how does economics help you build a video game? You know, I've used regression models to understand how different assets in a game might affect performance more or less. I interviewed Isaac and we are going to talk about how he got interested in economics, how he started doing research using World of Warcraft, how he uses economics in building Fortnite, and also his advice for you if you wanna get a job working in video game economics. First, I think there are a lot of people who are going to identify with Isaac on how they got interested in economics in the first place. I got interested in economics because I was actually really interested in uh, socialism and communism that I was became really interested in Marxist theory. And at that time in my life, I decided that the best way to challenge those ideas was to sign up for an econ class at a local community college. Isaac soon realized that studying economics was not just a battle of ideologies. He also discovered that economics contains so much more. Economics is a broader social science about why and how people make choices and I was just hooked. One of the things I really appreciated about talking to Isaac is that he went into economics not thinking about the career he was going to have, but just what he was interested in learning. I can't recall being on a particular path at that moment. I think I was just wanted to learn. Uh, I was very curious. I signed up for everything. I obviously standard principles courses, but I also took an economic development course. And it was that curiosity that led him to do some student research. And I get a lot of students asking me about what they can do to get started doing some research in economics. And I just love Isaac's story on this question. I believe it was a research methods class that uh, the, the summer prior, I had just started playing World of Warcraft, screwing around on there, and I made it to the city in Orgrimmar the first time, and I go find the auction house. I'm like, wow, there's this whole there's this whole economy in here. There's people buying and selling and hawking goods. That's fascinating. And so when the semester started and the professor said, everyone here is gonna have to do a research project, I was like, I'm gonna do mine on World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft for a student project. How cool is that? Imagine a professor who constantly gets boring student projects and someone comes up to him and says, I wanna look at economic questions in World of Warcraft. So cool. But what kind of questions could you ask about World of Warcraft related to economics? But I was interested in macroeconomics at the time and particularly was interested in the actions that Blizzard was taking to combat gold farming. The way they were combating this was by identifying gold farmers and then eliminating their money from the game. And so I was curious about inflation. I was like, okay, well, so this is a basic quantity theory of money test, right? So you delete a whole bunch of money from an economy without reducing the number of goods in that economy, then you should see deflation. And so that was what I went in with this to check and the price index and came back, you know, something like 40% deflation every six months. Monetary policy in World of Warcraft. Whoa! And really interesting now when I look back on it, you know, with a much broader perspective on economics and human behavior that, you know, that was actually not a very good experience for players because they probably saw the prices that they were fetching uh, falling over time and as such it didn't feel as good. I also really like this question he asked about guilds and their production possibilities frontier. Not every firm produces on the possibilities frontier so there's this analysis that tries to measure the inefficiency okay. of firm production by looking at a whole bunch of firms producing the same thing and then determining how far away from the frontier each firm was. So I did that with guilds. <laughs> to try to figure out, you know, like which which guild were the best in the sense of being productive. It was interesting because we were looking at like top 10 guilds in the world. And, you know, we found like the best guilds actually weren't the most productive. We were actually just maybe throwing more time at the problem 
Imagine you're a video game company interviewing students and you wanna find somebody who's gonna be a good fit at your company. This kind of student who goes out and does their own work to go get data from World of Warcraft, analyze it and show the economics going on behind the scenes, that is somebody who's going to stand out. So I think one of the biggest tips from Isaac is that if you're interested in doing student research, just go out there and start investigating questions that you're curious about. Understanding how the web works will open your eyes to just the sheer vast quantities of data that people just, the companies just spew out into the ether and you can just grab it. Grab it you just yeah. grab it and it's free, it's legal. It's like they put it out there, so just go. So how do you use economics to develop a video game? Well, computing power is a scarce resource and you need to allocate it across what's going on in the video game. That is an economics question. I mean, they are economics questions, but they are not sort of sort of research questions that you might encounter in academia. And so it's oftentimes using skills that I had learned in economics, especially around econometrics, to build out data models, to choose the correct regression model to apply to a particular question. You know, I've used progression models to understand how different assets in a game might affect performance more or less while controlling for what other assets were inside or being used at that time. So maybe a particular character model was inefficiently drawn for some reason. So they would like to know that. Another way, place where my economics training comes helpful is trying to hypothesize like how big changes to the game are gonna affect player behavior. I've found that that has been, again, very useful to be able to sort of almost at this point instinctually sort of break down these different actions and think about the impact that any new mechanic is going to have on players. So you notice he's not necessarily doing economic based questions in this game. It's not like he's analyzing currency in Fortnite. He's looking at resources and he's looking at player behavior and he's looking at all these other questions about how we allocate time, resources, all these different things and making sure that they know how to best allocate it. And that's what's amazing about economics is that it's about more than just the questions you get in your classes. With economics, you can go beyond just a simple correlational study. I guess what I've learned is that my economics training is useful well beyond the sorts of questions I was typically asked to answer in undergrad. Isaac has some specific advice for what you can do if you're interested in this kind of career. But first, I'd like to ask people about how economics has helped them outside of their career because economics opens up opportunities in your personal life, in your family, your community. It's about so much more than just your career. Well, uh, I just applied for to refinance my mortgage and making my spreadsheet and thinking, okay, you know, what's the opportunity cost if I invested these savings? And it was a lot of fun actually just to go through <laughs> and try to figure out. I mean, one of the great things about the principles classes, even if you don't major in it, is just reading in the newspaper mm. and being able to understand what's happening in the world around you. I've gotten really into foreign policy lately and like the amount of strategic thinking and weighing benefits and costs and understanding uh, geopolitics, like the, the way that economics allows you to sort of cut through and understand arguments that about very complex issues. So what steps can you take now if you're interested in becoming a video game analyst? I think that a minor in computer science at the very least <laughs> is probably one of the most useful things that you can do. If you want to get into hardcore analytics um, program, just just figure it out. Either figure it out or go, you know, go take a couple classes and online. You don't even have to take something at school. Just go online. This first tip resonated with me because when I was a kid playing video games, my dad told me, hey, if you like video games, why don't you start learning how to program so that way you could build your own video games. Nowadays, you can tell kids, if you like video games, why don't you start learning economics and data science so that way you can start analyzing those video games. You know, economics provides you with tools, the intellectual tools, the analytical framework to ask good questions um, and help you decide whether or not what you got is something you want to show someone else or how you want to explain it. If you come with the analytics chops, you'll be a high priority for any company these days. I mean, it's a great career. For those really committed to going into video game analytics, he had another tip. You want to be conversant in games, but also you can't just be a fan of games. 
games. You need to not just think hard about the game you like, but you need to be able to think hard about any game you put in front of you. How it works, why does it work this way? Where are some potential opportunities for arbitrage for this? Like you need to think critically about not just how you experience a game, but how other people experience many games. How does your mom and dad play this game? You know, how did, what did your professor think when you played this game? What do your friends think about this game? You need to come at it from a lot of different angles and a lot of different perspectives. Not just think about how do I make this game better for me, but how do I make this game better for everyone? I am interviewing all sorts of people who have studied economics and had careers that you might not think are possible with economics, but they are. If you're interested in more of those, go ahead and check them. I'll put the link up there. And if you're interested in seeing more about economics or even video game economics, go ahead and see these videos right here. Thank you so much, Isaac, for joining us. And we hope to see you next time on Market Power.